In part one of this series, we took a look at my uh, Remington New Police Revolver, which of course is chambered in 38 rimfire, and tried to give you a little bit of the history of that gun, and uh, just, just some interesting facts about it. And I pointed out that guns of this type can often be less expensive because they're for a cartridge that you simply cannot buy. Uh, in fact, it's very difficult to make, and that lowers the price. But there is a way to load up 38 rimfire cartridges and get some of these guns back in action. There's a company in France called the H&L Publishing Company that makes reloading kits for 32 rimfire, 38 rimfire, and for 41 rimfire. Well, before I can shoot the little Remington and 38 rimfire, I've got to put some 38 rimfire cases together. So, to that end, I ordered this basic 38 rimfire reloading kit from H&L Publishing, uh, which is in Europe, and, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if it's in France or in Belgium, because I get a Belgium internet address, but the mailing, all the mailing stuff came from France. So, this is the kit, and uh, basically, here's what it looks like, a nice wooden case. We've got these cartridge cases, right, which are basically like 38 long Colt, except they are uh, drilled out. Take a 22 caliber blank as a primer. And then he's got some bullets, which he already cast, which saves us a little bit of time. Uh, though eventually I'll be using some of these arrows gone arrows gone conical bullets which will do the same deal and then we've got the tool so that tool consists of a base unit that uh, holds the brass case during several operations it's got a resizing and seating tool. It's got a seating plunger. And it's got a little bullet pusher here. Oops, let me get these out. We've got a couple of bullet pushers to use during the resizing and the decapping operations. So that's pretty much it. And here's oh, and one piece of gear I did not have in there. This is a powder measure. It holds about 12 grains of uh, 3F powder. Uh, not very much, but you know, enough to do the job. So here's how you use it. And I'm doing it for the first time, so these cases don't really require resizing. So it's, it's really pretty simple. I've already adjusted the bullet pusher for the right size. So I'm going to take the base and I'm going to put an unprimed cartridge in it. This is a little bit different than I would have thought it would go, but it, but it works. I've, I've done three of them so far, and I haven't blown anything up. So, so far so good, right? So, I'm going to take a bullet, and I'm going to kind of line it up on top of the, uh, the cartridge case. Just get it started a little bit. Then I'm going to put the bullet seating end of this over it. So there's two ends here, and you can see these three bands on here. Well, the non-banded end is the resizing end after it's fired, and the banded end is the bullet seater. Seating end, so I'm going to put that over. I'm going to drop this on, and then I'm just going to hammer it down and use these adjusting nuts to get everything lined up where you want it to be. Then you tighten it up and, and you're good to go. So I'm going to pull that off. Alright, so now we've got the cartridge, uh, the cartridge case and the bullet made it up. So we've got to put powder in and prime it. Now I would have put powder in before seating the bullet, ordinarily, but that's not the directions that uh, that these guys give and what the heck I'll do it their way but I think I think it could work either way just as well you're in no more danger either way so I'm going to pour the powder in here 
through the priming hole. Like I say, I think you can do it either way. All right. Now this is where it feels a little bit squirrely, but but so far it has worked just fine. So I'm going to take this 22 blank, 22 caliber blank. I'm going to just get it started a little bit. And then I'm going to seat it with the hammer. Now what I'm doing is I've got a piece of perfectly flat steel which I know won't set it off and I'm using that to uh, kind of finish it off. So when you're done it looks like this. Fully loaded cartridge. So there's there's four. We'll do one more. This is kind of wild. This kit comes with 12 bullets and 12 cartridge cases. So I'm going to switch over later to these Eras Gone conicals, which will require me to adjust the bullet seater a bit, but, but that's okay. But in the meantime, because these things are wicked expensive, I'm going to use the, the bullets that came with it. So once again, got the uh, the bullet in. Give the cedar a good whack, and voila, we're all seated up. Now comes powder. Too blank for a primer. Try to get that started as straight as I can. A couple of wax to start it off. Put it on the flat piece of steel. Whack it good and solid. And another fully made cartridge. So next next thing we gotta do is go out to the range and uh, See if these guys will fire. All right, so I'm out here at the West Shore Sportsman's Association. I didn't go to Duelist Den today because this is going to be very fast and not worth the drive all the way out to the den because I've got, got my little Remington. This is a Remington New Police that you've been watching. And I've got my loaded up Rimfire 38 cartridges, right? So what I want to do today, <laughs> my whole goal, is to see if these actually go off in that gun. And, and I've got some concerns, and I'm going to show you why in just a second. But uh, I really have my fingers crossed about this. All right, so here's the issue I'm worried about. Let me show you how this works. We're going to drop the lever, pull a base pin, take out the cylinder, and that's how you load it. Of course, as I've showed you, this is a two-piece cylinder. Back plate comes off. Now, here's, here's the deal. That hammer nose has to hit through those little slots in the in the back plate. And let me show you exactly how that works. First thing we gotta do is get that firing pin, the 22 blank, lined up with the slot in the back plate as good as we can. And when we do, you can see exactly how little of that rim of the 22 is showing almost nothing at all. And you can also see, I think, this countersink is very deep, and that's because those early cartridges, and some of them were pretty balloon-headed. Uh, so I'm concerned about the hammer nose actually being able to contact that primer. Now what I did, and I'm going to show you, I'll show you in just one second, if I can get this. Okay. It'll load this carefully because Obviously in the original, the whole rim was the primer, but now we've got a very small window of opportunity. Right? That primer's got to line up with the hammer nose firing pin and give it a good striking window. And this, like I showed you, there's not much room there. So we want to get those lined up as good as we can. I'm going to put them all in. 
and I'm going to show you what I did to um, give me a more fighting chance. Okay, so right after the pin right here, you can see that slot is much bigger, and that's because I've opened it up. So I'm trying to give myself as much of a chance as I can. Now, maybe that wasn't necessary and they're all going to go off. I don't know. That's the best case. The worst case is maybe doing that still not even enough to make them go off. And the only way we're going to know is to shoot them. So all I wanted to do was go bang. So let's see if it does. So on days like today, I envy you gun guys who live down south because it's uh, late December and it's cold here but uh we've got the little remington let's see how it does all right that was the one with the deeper cut slot and it went off so let's see how the others do All right, most of them went off, not all of them did. Uh, I think I'm gonna cut all those slots a little bit deeper. And, uh, but the important thing is, this gun is back to shooting. All right, so that primer that didn't fire right here, I pulled, uh, pulled the bullet and uh, knocked out the powder and took the primer out and you can see we hit this in a couple of places and still did not go off. So I was concerned that maybe that uh, that cartridge casing was no good. So I replaced it with a new primer and just took it out to the shed and fired this off without any powder or bullet and it went right off. Bang. No problem. Now, here's one that was fired with the powder. And what I want you to see, I'm not sure how well it'll show up on here, but the hit is right there, and it is just a tiny area, but they're, they're still going off. So, that's the good news. So, now let's show you how you load up cartridges that have been fired once. Alright, so here we've got a bunch of fired cases, and the first step is to get the primers out. And uh, what the directions tell you to do is to take a jackknife and get under the lip and carefully pry them out. And I started to do that, and I'm here to tell you, that is rough on the knife and on the cartridge case. And, and the directions even say, you know, watch out because the case is delicate and you can damage it. So here's what I'm doing, which is a little bit different. I'm just pounding this thing out, which I think is easier on the case. And it's certainly easier on my knife blade. So, the back of the holder has got that handy dandy little hole. And if that's not what they meant it for, I don't know why they put it there. Because it happens to work just fine for pounding these guys out. So, bang. Alright, so there you go. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to pound, I'm going to pound all of these 22 blanks out. And then we'll resize them. All right. Once, once you've got them all deprimed, next thing to do is lube them. I like to use one shot lube. I'm just going to do one right now because, you well, know, I don't want everything to dry out while I'm demonstrating this. But basically, a little one shot lube. Bang. And the reason is because this is not a carbide sizing die. All right. So you're about to see the reason why I only lubed one case. Here's here's what they tell you to do. Start it in with your fingers, and then put it in a padded vise and send it home. By tightening the vise. Now, that works. Let me switch this over here so we can see what we got. All right, that works. <laughs> I gotta think there's an easier way. 
I, I may just use a 38 special resizing die and see if that works better. Uh, but right now we'll do it the way the kit says. The last step is to oh. cases in here, right? I'm gonna take this rod, pop it all the way in, and it says just push it out. Well, we'll see. They're pretty cavalier. Well, it did come out. I had my doubts, but here we go. Resize case. Put that aside. I'll just do five more. And uh, then we load them the same way that I showed you originally. So that's pretty much the whole procedure for this gun. A little time consuming, but at least it gets you back into business with a rimfire cartridge.